I'm looking for a property. I've got a budget of around 600,000 um, and my wife loves ski slopes. So somewhere next to those. This will just take a sec. I found a couple of properties that might interest you. One. So this was all retrieved from Airtable. This, this base here will be automatically updated. You don't have to go somewhere else and manually chop and change everything. It all does it for you. I'm pretty happy with this build. So they're completely dynamic. So I found this workaround and it then doesn't make those mistakes and doesn't then sound robotic. It just sounds very natural. Hello, ladies and gents. Let's show you the demo of what we're gonna be building in make.com. Uh, you do need quite a big tech stack for this. I have been watching Leon Van Zyl's YouTube videos for a few months now, and I've learned how to do Flowwise and A10 and a bit of rag because of him. So total shout outs to uh, especially the N810 build and connecting Flowwise for auto updating. He has a killer tutorial on how to set all this up. So I will just put like his channel uh, in, the, in the description below. And if you do actually want to build out all this, um, I would just recommend following his videos. They're absolutely amazing. Um, the only thing that I actually built out myself was this make.com scenario. So um, I will give you this in my Gumroad template. And essentially what this does here is that uh, just connects up with my Flowwise instance. Um, but yeah, I'll just show you the demo of how this sounds like. What property do you want to search for? Yeah, I'm looking for a property. I've got a budget of around 600,000 um, and my wife loves ski slopes. So somewhere next to those. Just to confirm, you're looking for a property with a budget of around 600,000 and you would like it to be near ski slopes. Is that correct? Yeah, that's right. This will just take a sec. I found a couple of properties that might interest you. One, Tucker County, a cozy home priced at $595,000. It features four bedrooms and three bathrooms, accommodating up to 12 guests. The property includes heated floors, a mud room, and a private deck perfect for entertaining. Plus, nice. it's just a five minute walk to the slopes and Timberline Lodge. Two, La Plata County. No, that one, that one sounds perfect. Let's go with the first one. Great choice. The cozy home in Tucker County sounds perfect for your needs. If you need any further assistance or details about the property, feel free to ask. Cool. I'll call you guys back. Thank you. But yeah, there you go. So this was all retrieved from Airtable. So I'm going to show you the rough outline of this uh, Airtable database for uh, real estate properties. So it's like this. I've hidden a few fields, uh, some people's names, etc. Um, and yeah, you found one with ski slopes. So let's see if I actually have one with that. So there you go. Tucker County and large sliding doors provide ski slope views. Um, and yeah, that was actually all in the uh, description of the property. And as you guys can see, it also matched it with the price. Uh, it was 595, but it was close enough. And this was all done in natural language. Now the beauty of this is that if you watch Leon Van Zyl's video and especially his last one, he'll actually show you how to set it up so that this, this base here will be automatically updated. Um, so what you need to do is to have like a Flowwise instance and he'll go through on how to set this up. And as well, what we have is the database for that. So. If you go in document stores, I've got my real estate. And if you guys notice, uh, we have 46 chunks. So what this does is when you um, process and preview and then upset it, then what it does is splits it into chunks per row. So see, I've got 46 properties. Yeah, so that, that's why I have the 46 chunks. So each row and how we control how often it updates and things like that is via this scenario. Uh, again, I was literally just followed his tutorial. Yeah, so we built this out. Uh, yeah, schedules, it processes all the chunks, so loops through uh, all the different items and the items are actually in the data store. 
So you might not have Airtable, but you might have another document here that you want to look at or another Airtable base that you might, might want to have a look at. You might have like three of them. So that loops through all those. Uh, and then it goes through uh, every single chunk in uh, within each one of those things. Uh, and then it then waits a few seconds and then upserts all of those chunks that it's found uh, missing or deleted or updated and it updates them, updates them automatically. So the output here will come out as uh, what was changed or not, because you might have not changed anything. So the beautiful thing is uh, you could have this running on like every six hours, every 12 hours and every 24 hours. So when your client, for example, real estate client has changed in the property, maybe you got sold, all they have to come and do is come in here, click delete record. So now, now, I'm gonna, now I have 45. And then when you run this, it should now tell us that one of the records was deleted. So number deleted one, uh, we have now 45 in there. So we have 45 chunks or properties. And yeah, so this will work on autopilot uh, in the back end. And yeah, I'm pretty happy with this build. Probably the only downside is it takes the, because I'm going to give you this this part here, right? In make.com. So this is just a web book. And how you set that up is you come into the advanced settings of your VAPI agent. Um, and I actually set that up in the functions. So I have a get property function. And all I've done for this is uh, in the integrations, the server URL is for this URL. So you just copy that. And when you're creating your tool, uh, you'll paste it into the server URL section. My tool name is get property. And my tool description is use this tool. Uh, I should probably say to search properties in our database. And my search criteria. And then the search criteria for a real estate property, i.e. three bedroom house for half a million with a pool. So we don't want the agent to uh, like modify anything or change any values. We pretty much want it to be given to us how the person said it. It's all meant to be done in natural language. It's meant, meant to be like nothing else happening uh, in the background. Uh, yeah, I've built out quite a lot of different ways to do this and I found this to be probably the smoothest uh, in terms of tracking and talking to your database. And when I say tracking, like how to auto update everything right so before maybe use an excel sheet you maybe had to go on there and add stuff manually and then come into make.com and maybe there was a scheduler but sometimes it might not work um, this way is so much smoother so what happens now is i've got a transform to json module in here and i've got search a property with these criteria and then the result that comes from vapi is property near ski slopes for half a million dollars or whatever i uh, said here let's have a look for 600,000 and it actually gave us those in words and not letters. And then what happens in Flowwise, it all converts it into things where it can match with each specific key value. Uh, and the key values are actually these. So they're completely dynamic, which is even cooler. So even if you delete uh, one of these columns and then you just upsert again in your thing, you don't have to go somewhere else and manually chop and change everything. It all does it for you. I also have a suit up hooked up to Postgres via Superbase. Uh, so that was actually quite nice setup as well. And this is probably the only tricky part. Um, so in here, I've added in the API key auth request. So how I did that is I went into HTTP module, uh, make an API key auth request. Then you click add. You call this otherwise instance or whatever you want to call it. You put your Flowwise API key in here and you grab it from, what if I just grab some like random chat that I have? Yeah, that I'm not actually using. So in here, it's like a default key. So then what happens are essentially when you click on add a new key, what you wanna do then is copy the link that comes up and then uh, the API key or the bearer key that comes with it. So you just grab the uh, bearer key 
and then you paste that into into here as well. So you paste your key in here. You do not, so don't put bearer in here. You just put your key in here and then make.com takes care of all that. And in this spot, you put an authorization. And then click on create. And then that will then uh, have your Flowwise instance a bit more secured. So like me, if I'm about to share this with someone or someone jumps into my make.com flow, they can't just uh, jump in and use my Flowwise instance all the time. Because uh, otherwise, the other way to do it would be to do uh, this one here. And then in here, you'd go authorization, you'd go bearer, and then type in your bearer key, and then everyone can see it, right? So, uh, I like that. It, uh, this way is a lot more secure. Cool. And then we had our result. So, what I did then is I matched this tool call structure, is actually coming back from Vapi. I should probably give you guys that in the notes. Give me a sec. Yep, so I just added in a little note on this module. Uh, so what happens now is when you click on notes here, it's got like a little blue dot on this. You see this come up. Because most likely when you download this, you import it. Uh, when you choose this, what will happen then is this, you won't have this tool structure right here. What you might have to do is make a new module type in create JSON and then click add and then click on generate here and then give it that sample that the the JSON that I have in the note uh, so I'm just copying all that click on generate save uh, add item and then you have the same thing that I had you don't have to look at any code you don't have to do anything special you just you just chuck it all in uh, press O so in this case, I'm just going to delete it because I already have it made here. But you follow those steps and then the whole result just goes, you just click on the result here and uh, that's what gets sent to VAPI. And that's what currently works with the tool structure or the tooling structure of VAPI currently. Uh, and yeah, and the result that we actually got back to VAPI was, I found a fantastic property in New Otago County, uh, cost $590,000. Now what I'm getting Flowwise to do for me is to also change these into words. So what sometimes VAPI does is, for example, when you have like a number like 599,000, it might read it as like dollars and $5.990000. That's actually very frustrating. So the LLM sometimes can't handle when there's too many zeros, especially without commas. So I found this workaround and when you have the numbers out, written out in natural language, it then doesn't make those mistakes and doesn't then sound robotic. It just sounds very natural like it did during the out demo, right? Um, yeah. And what I'll do is I'll give you this template along with a prompt that I had from a property search agent. So I'll put that in my gum road. I've shown you how to do it. If you have any troubles or anything, let me know in my LinkedIn. Yeah, anyway, thanks for watching, ladies and gents. Hopefully uh, you've learned something from today and yeah, peace out.